The day started out like any other day. Woke up and went to my shitty job. I finally made it far enough through the day to go on break and decided to walk over to the gas station next door. I planned on just grabbing a soda, a snack, and a new vape as my current vape was starting to die. I was looking at the case the vapes were kept in and noticed a new product, Amanita Muscaria Gummies. It said boldly on the package, Legal Psychedelic. This intrigued me because it said on the package that they were illegal shrooms. I have taken psilocybin mushrooms before and had several enjoyable experiences with them, so I said to myself, why not? They're right here and apparently legal. I live in a state that has some of the most strict laws for drugs in America, so I was somewhat skeptical to if they would live up to what the package said they were, but I wanted to give them a shot anyways because if they did work, this would be a much easier method to trip as mushrooms and other psychedelics were a rarity where I live, with it being a strict state and all. I did my research before taking them and realized the active ingredients were from a poisonous mushroom, so that made me even more skeptical until I read that, if prepared correctly, it was pretty safe to take and not going to kill you. Later that night, I took them, and the best way I can describe it was that it was definitely not like regular shrooms. There were visual effects, but nothing too intense, and the euphoric feeling was enjoyable. There was a side effect where you basically kind of get paralysis and it becomes very hard to move or think, but I was able to counter it with willpower alone, so it didn't really bother me. I enjoyed the experience overall and decided to try it a few more times. After the third time, I didn't really feel anything at all, so I looked it up if it had a tolerance buildup similar to shrooms. I got mixed answers where some people said it had a reverse tolerance, where you still got high, but with less, and the others said it had a regular tolerance to that of psilocybin. The latter was true in my case. This was disappointing, but I decided to simply just wait a week and give it another shot. After a week had passed, I thought it was long enough of a wait and I was good to go to have another dose. Went to the same gas station and got another pack. The gummies had 500 milligrams per gummy of the active ingredients of the mushroom. Five gummies equal 2,500 milligrams in all, and that was what I usually took, which was a considerably high dose, but it was never overwhelming for me. So later that night, I popped all five and waited. Usually, when my tolerance wasn't built up, the effects took only 30 minutes to kick in, and it was very obvious. After the 30 minutes passed and I didn't feel anything, I decided that I still had a tolerance and went to bed disappointed. Little did I know what I was in for, a ride to say the least. I am a very lucid dreamer to begin with. Almost every dream I have, I am at least in control of myself, but not always in control of my surroundings and the people or creatures around me. Not only that, but my dreams are usually very wild and almost nightmarish most of the time. All my dreams usually have this sense of impending doom or that something was following or hunting me. I also often dream of myself dying a lot. You know how with most people they have these dreams where they are falling from a high distance and they always wake up right before they hit the ground? That doesn't happen for me. I hit the ground and I feel everything. I feel pain, the life draining from me, and a feeling of an ever-consuming void overcome me. Then, after I die in my dream, I simply respawn like I am in a video game and continue dreaming. When I die in my dreams, it feels realistic. I remember one time where I was in a gunfight for whatever reason, and I was shot in my chest. The pain felt so real that I woke up screaming like I was in agony. That one really spooked me. But enough about my lucid dreaming. That was just to set up what I went through when I went to sleep while on Amanita. Like I said, after assuming that I wasn't going to trip, I said fuck it and went to bed as I was already sleep deprived. I then had an astral projection for several hours that became the most intense experience I have ever had in my life. I had slipped into a realm of severe schizophrenic madness. Let me start from the beginning. When I went into this astral projection, at least I'm pretty sure it was one, I had no idea of it and parts of the experience were not completely similar to other people's reports online that I have read up on. Usually when I read about astral projection experiences, people say that you basically float out of your body and you can see yourself sleeping in bed as if you were looking at yourself in third person. Those same people also report that their surroundings are basically the same as they are outside the projection with familiar surroundings. No distortion, no people are usually there other than the famous shadow people and colors just look dull. And the whole experience doesn't last that long. 
none of that was my case. It started out like a normal dream. I was in a house that was completely foreign to me, but at the same time, I felt like I've been there before. This part of the projection I don't remember much of because nothing out of the ordinary was really happening. Then, at some point, I started hearing things, almost like someone else was in the house with me. This began to stress me out because I thought there was an intruder in the house that was not supposed to be in there, so I began wandering about trying to find the source of the noise. The house had a liminal layout, but wasn't terribly unrealistic at first. As I wandered further, things started to unfold into an endless maze. Eventually it became nothing but hallways, and the aesthetic of the halls almost had a feeling of a prison, but still had the feeling of a house, i.e. wood floors, wood panel walls, etc. I began to notice that the walls were lined with rows of cot beds that had what seemed like people sleeping in them. They looked human because they had normal looking skin and hair. Every person was facing towards the wall, so I couldn't see any of their faces. I didn't think anything of it at the time, so I continued my journey through the halls. Eventually, after what seemed like hours, I came across a small room the size of a closet with a single mirror on the wall big enough to see my face. I made the mistake of looking into it. What I saw shocked me because the person in the reflection did not resemble me. In fact, it barely even looked human. But deep down, I knew it was me. The face I saw disturbed me deeply. The eyes looked only slightly human, completely circular with no eyelids or eyelashes, with a piercing thousand yard stare that felt like it penetrated my soul. The skin around the eyes were red as if they had cried endlessly for a long time, and the face had wrinkles so defined that it was like they had fought in a thousand wars and experienced endless tragedies. Looking into this mirror was the catalyst to the rest of the projection. After looking away from the mirror, disgusted and shocked at what I saw, I felt different. Everything felt different. But it was still the endless hallways with beds all across the wall. The one thing that was different was that the people in the beds were facing me now, and they no longer resembled humans. They were silhouettes of blackness, with those perfectly circular human-like eyes similar to the ones in the mirror. All of them were looking at me, and that's where the schizophrenic-like experiences started. The voices were whispers that were inaudible to me, but a few that were, I heard comforting words like, don't give up, and things will get better. They were obviously coming from these figures, yet I could not understand most of them. They had no visible mouths for words to come from. The only visible feature they had were those ungodly eyes. Out of nowhere, I had woken up in my bed. I thought to myself, holy shit, that was crazy. I think I astral projected and actually saw those shadow people that were always talked about. Then I looked around and realized I hadn't woken up at all. I was still there. I had only woken up into a new layer of this hell. So I got out of my bed and continued on. The voices started again and I began to hear a multitude of other noises such as banging and knocking deep within the walls, many footsteps, and what sounded like claws scraping on a concrete surface. I began to have the feeling that something was following me, trying to find me, hunting me. This is when the anxiety really set in and so I began to walk faster. The voices became louder and more in number. Some were even becoming coherent to me and no longer just whispers in the distance. But there were so many voices that I couldn't concentrate on any of them. I tried, but it was pointless. They became so overwhelming that I could tell that the real me, the one stuck in slumber, was tossing and turning desperately trying to awake. I kept waking up over and over again only to find out I was yet in another layer of this experience, and the noises kept getting louder and multiplying to the point that it sounded like hundreds of voices were trying to talk to me and hundreds of footsteps trying to get to me. At one point, I had woken up for the last time, presumably in the last layers of whatever this was, and the shadow figures were out of their beds, standing, staring. I could tell by how they looked at me that they hated me, that I had overstayed my welcome. Then, they started screaming. The few sentences that I was able to coherently understand were, you're going to kill yourself, you're going to die, you'll be here forever. And the one sentence that stood out the most that kept getting repeated was that, 
it was going to kill me. I do not know what they meant by it, but I wasn't going to stand there and find out. I began running, faster than I ever have ran before. This upset the figures, and they started to come after me. They didn't have any visible legs that I could see, but they were moving fast. Some stood still and had arms that stretched for what seemed like miles trying to grab me. There were countless numbers of these things, and I was still trying to run down this hallway with very little room to avoid them. For whatever reason, I did not feel like they were trying to harm me, but yet capture me and take me somewhere. I did not want to find out where that was. This continued on for what seemed like a lifetime, and the sounds became so overwhelming that I couldn't even have a single thought. Then, I woke up. I woke up and I was in my room. I had my computer on the desk next to me, my nightstand with a clock that read 4.42 a.m., and my air conditioner was on, but I still wasn't sure I was back in reality. I was still suspicious that I had just woken up into yet another layer of that ungodly plane of existence. I stayed in bed for what felt like hours, unsure if I was back in the land of the living and real, mentally exhausted. Eventually, I got the energy to hop out of bed, still disoriented and dizzy, and went to the bathroom. I turned the lights on and looked into the mirror with blurred vision. It was me, the face that I always see in the mirror. That was when I truly knew I was awake. I have never felt such relief in my life. I don't really know how to end this, but I am writing this the night after I woke up, still trying to comprehend what happened to me. Everything in that dream, or astral projection, felt so real. I could touch, smell, taste, hear, and remember everything as if it really happened to me. I feel like something has changed in me, but I cannot pinpoint what. And what scares me is that I have a craving, almost like an addict, to go back to that place, to that plane of madness, but fear that I might get stuck there forever like the figures were warning me about and that it, even though I never saw it, might get me. If you ever come across Amanita muscaria, which comes in many forms, gummies, chocolates, vapes, or even just cooking the mushroom itself, I'm not telling you to avoid it, nor am I condoning it, but goddamn, be careful with it. What I experienced might have just been a one-off thing that's secluded to myself. I haven't been in the right state of mind recently to begin with, but what I experienced will be something that I will remember for the rest of my life. I want to write more and in better detail, but I still don't have my full mental capacity back and writing this is actually kind of hard at the moment. Please be careful with psychedelics in general and be sure you're in a safe and stable state of mind to begin with before taking them.